Hi everybody, this is Laura with Crazy Cool Cakes. I'm doing a tutorial on how I prep my cakes for icing, how I set up my cake boards, and how I crumb coat my cakes. I've had a lot of requests and questions about these specific things, so hopefully this will help some of you. Uh, first off, I just want to show you all very quickly the cake that I'm going to be icing. This is an 8 inch cake and it has three layers and as you can see they're all very evenly torted so this is what we're gonna what we're gonna be icing So a lot of you have seen this uh, Wilton turntable this is what I use to ice my cakes okay so if you don't know where to get these you can get these at any craft store and since we are going to be icing an 8 inch cake then we of course are going to need an 8 inch cake board and this is just your typical everyday cardboard cake board okay and the way that I ice my cakes is I like to have underneath the cake board that the cake's going to be on the next size up of cardboard. Okay, a lot of people ice their cakes straight on the turntable, but this is the way that I like to that I like to do it. So, what I do is just take your everyday, you know, packaging tape, clear packaging tape, and I'm going to tape this 10-inch cake board to my turntable. Okay? So, let me just do that very quickly. Basically, I just take my tape and I loop it, put it right in the middle of my turntable. And I usually use the white side, but I'm going to go ahead and have the brown side up so that way you guys will actually see the difference between the two cake boards. So I'm placing the 10 inch there and it's stuck. Okay, it's not going anywhere. Then I'm going to tape my 8 inch cake board to the 10 inch. And this is basically just for convenience, just to be able to easy, easily be able to pick up my cake in and out of the fridge okay so I take my packaging tape about this size I loop it again put it right in the middle of my 10 inch cake board and then I put the 8 inch right in the middle of the 10 inch cake board so now this is ready for me to put my cake on and start icing okay now a lot of you guys have seen a lot of tutorials and a lot of videos out there on how to put some type of a barrier between the cardboard cake board and the cake and really this is just so you make sure that your cake doesn't touch the cardboard if you're gonna be having the cake sit on the cardboard for a long time there is a possibility that the bottom of the cake will start to taste a little bit like the cardboard so that's really the only reason why we're doing this so you've seen a lot of people put wax paper or parchment paper and use glue guns and all sorts of you know wrap aluminum if you want to do it that way of course that's an option but the easiest way that I have found is just to put a very thin layer of icing on my cake board okay so I use a very soft buttercream recipe this is what I'm going to use to ice my cakes and this is also what I use to make the barrier between my cardboard and the cake board so all I do is just take a little tiny bit of icing and you're just gonna ice or smear icing on the cardboard and make sure it's completely covered again guys this is gonna be so thin that you can still see the corrugations on the cardboard okay So as you can see, this is a lot simpler than wrapping this in aluminum or putting wax paper or all kinds of stuff, okay? And that's all you need to keep your cake from touching the cardboard. There's a very thin, thin layer of icing on here, and so now your cake is not going to, it's not going to taste like cardboard. And so all I do now is I just stick this in the freezer for about 60 seconds. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. I just took this out of the freezer and it's completely rock hard okay so now I know that my cake is not going to be touching the cardboard at all so the way that I start doing this to get ready for crumb coating is I can go ahead and set down one of my layers of cake on my cake board so I'm just going to take off my parchment paper okay put it right in the middle of my of my cake board. Okay, so now I've got my first layer of cake on the cardboard. And now the most important thing about crumb coating, guys, to make sure that you don't get ugly an ugly icing job is to create a dam 
between the layers of your cake. So I have an icing bag that's filled, not with this icing, not with the soft buttercream, but it's filled with a very thick consistency icing, which is a recipe made up completely of just shortening and sugar. And I will have the link to that recipe. I use Edna de la Cruz's recipe, and it's worked wonderfully for me for a few years now. Okay, so you, you want to make sure you have a very thick icing and use a very large tip so that you can build a nice thick dam all the way around your cake. All right, now you want to not be right on the edge. You want at least one centimeter between the edge of your cake and where you place your dam. So I'm going to go ahead and start piping. And I'm turning my turntable very slowly with my finger. And make sure you close the seam, okay? So there's my dam all the way around my cake. And now I'm going to fill my cake with a very uh, soft buttercream. Or you can use any type of filling. You can use fruit filling or, you know, whatever you want. And this barrier, because it is thick, it will keep your filling from being squeezed out in between your tears. So a lot of you have seen a lot of cakes that have a bulge or they have little waves on the side of the cake and that's because they did not build a dam and that allowed all of the filling or whatever it is you put in between your cake tears to be squeezed out. And I've heard people tell me, well, after I ice my cakes, you know, when, when they didn't build a bit dam, they say, well, after I ice my cakes, I pushed down the cakes as much as I could with my hands. So how come I still had bulging? Well, you know, you can push it down as hard as you can with your hands, but after you leave it alone for a while, guys, gravity still takes over, and it's still going to keep, you know, being pressed down. So just doing that is not enough. You need to build some type of a dam, okay? And I'm going to actually add some pineapple filling to this, and I'll be right back after I do that. Okay, so here is my fruit filling, pineapple fruit filling that I added to my cake. And, you know, I, I pressed it down with my hand to make sure that it's not higher than the level of my, of my dam. And, of course, yes, it is going to get squeezed down when we add the next layer of cake. But you want to make sure that you don't overflow the center of your cake. You want it pretty much level. Okay, so my second layer of cake, I'm just going to remove my parchment paper here. You want to have the flat side down. Okay, and then just carefully place it right on top of the next here. And I'm pressing down with my hand. The next thing I'm gonna do now is to prepare my, my third and final layer is once again, I'm gonna build a dam using my very thick consi consistency icing, which is the shortening recipe. And again, you wanna place your dam. You wanna start slowly and give yourself about one centimeter uh, from the edge of your cake. This uh, tip that I'm using, by the way, is a 1A, size 1A. You can use a little bit bigger if you want. And then again, using my, again, guys, whatever type of filling. If you want to just use buttercream, you can use any type of fruit fillings, custards, puddings. Okay, that barrier is strong enough to keep whatever you want to put in here. And so I'm just going to press down my icing level it down a little bit and be careful that you don't move your dam with your spatula just go right up to the edge okay okay now I'm gonna add some more pineapple filling to this layer and I shall be right back alright guys so I added my pineapple filling and again, pretty much level. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfectly straight because you are going to put your third and final cake on top and press it down. But that's pretty much what the inside of any cake should look like. You always want to build yourself a nice thick dam. Add whatever filling you want on the inside. Make sure it's not, you know, domed over. It's got to be pretty level. 
Okay, so this dam here pretty much guarantees, and again, remember guys, it has to be a thick consistency icing. It's not gonna do any good if your dam is the same soft buttercream that you're using in the center, okay? So it's gotta be a very thick consistency icing. Remember that link will be underneath the video. So what I'm gonna do now is add my third and final layer. Some people only use two layers. I like to use three layers on all my cakes only because I like the height. Most of the time, my cakes are about six inches tall. So I like my cakes to be pretty tall, each one of my tiers. So now you can see here, my husband's giving you guys a nice shot of the sides and you can tell there's a, there's a good amount of distance, about a centimeter, maybe a little bit more from the dam that we built inside to the edge of the cake. So this here will all be filled with my crumb coating. So what I'm doing now is just making sure that my cake is pretty much pressed down. You don't want to squeeze the heck out of it. Just, you know, just press it nice, nice and softly so that you know your cakes aren't going anywhere. Make sure they're nice and straight. Okay. If you look at the, at the sides here, you'll see they're all uniform. There's not one cake sticking out more than the other. Okay, so now I'm going to crumb coat. If I had a little bit of icing on my cardboard here, I like to clean it up. So you guys can see the white cake board, the eight inch cake board that the eight inch cake is on. And remember I have another cardboard underneath the eight inch just for icing purposes and for convenience to be lifting the cake in and out of the fridge, okay? Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is my crumb coat on my cake. So again, using my very soft consistency icing, I like to start by just adding a pretty big chunk of icing on the top. I start in the middle and just carefully start spinning my turntable as I'm putting a very thin layer of icing on top. You always want to start with more than what you need and that way you can just scrape off whatever you don't need. I make sure the entire top is covered and I come out pressing my icing little by little out over the edge. You should pretty much be able to see the cake through the icing. This layer here really is just as thin as the layer that we put on the 8 inch cardboard to build that barrier between the cardboard and the cake. You can pretty much see all the cake through the icing. That's how thin it is, okay? Then, I like to take, when I crumb the sides, crumb coat the sides of my cake, I like to take big amounts of icing and I start from the bottom and you're going to press it up against the cake to make sure that the icing is getting squeezed inside this area here between the layers of cake. And we'll do this enough so that the icing actually goes all the way in and touches the dam, okay? And just get more icing as you need it. We'll actually go over it twice just to make sure that the icing did reach the dam between the layers. If my husband can get a shot here, you can see how the icing in between these two layers of cake are actually touching the dam. So you wanna make sure that it goes all the way in there, okay? I'm going all the way around and you can actually see the icing that has gone in between the layers, okay? Now I'm going to start working my way up. And you want to form that little edge there coming over the, the side of the cake. Alright guys, so I'm just continuing to go all the way around just working my icing all the way around. And as you can see guys, the layer of icing is so thin that you can see all the cake 
uh, coming through and the whole point of the crumb coat is just for when you are ready to actually ice your cakes you won't have any crumbs being released into your icing so some of the icing like we said came up over the top there's a little lip of icing so all I do is just take my spatula and I start from the outside in just right on the edge you just bring it in and just to make sure you have a nice straight edge any excess that stays on your spatula just um, place it back into your bowl wiping your spatula every time making sure you have a pretty much clean clean spatula so this is what a crumb coat should look like very thin layer you know start off with your cakes properly torted you build your dam in between the layers go ahead and fill it with whatever you want remember your dam should only be about one centimeter from the edge of the cake and then you take a very soft consistency buttercream and you crumb coat your entire cake and make sure that all of the space in between your layers of cake have been completely filled with the icing and make sure your top you know is nice and and straight and ready for your icing this is going to go into my freezer for about 10 minutes to chill and then I'm going to go ahead and add a second uh, coat of my thick consistency buttercream I already have that tutorial up for you guys it's how to ice uh, cakes straight with straight edges and smooth sides so go ahead and check out that video if you haven't seen it so hopefully this helps you all I actually place this entire cake here into the freezer and so the tape of course sticks to the bottom so you can just remove that tape and this is what I'll be using to carry my cakes in and out of the fridge and I'll add my second coat of buttercream icing to this still leaving the cake on the cardboard the only time this cake is going to come off of this 10 inch will be when I'm ready to stack my cakes Alright guys, so hopefully this helps some people. Let me know if you have any questions and thank you for being a subscriber. Talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.